So let's uh, let's start. Sorry for the small delay in the beginning. Seems to be a lot of buttons up here. Um, I hope you all recovered from uh, from yesterday evening. Um, maybe since this is the first first presentation on this track, maybe we should take it a little bit a little bit easy. Um, my name is Tom Lismos. I'm from Promon, um, and today I'm going to mostly demonstrate but also try to <coughs> explain a little bit about the aspects of um, what you could say penetrative testing in, on, the, on the client side. So this is very much about the threats and uh, the method used um, on a client system to do bad things. So. Um, Let's try to, to think for, for one minute. Um, what is it uh, that we want to achieve today? Um, well, I would like to, hopefully we will learn a little bit about, uh, about security in this presentation. But also I would like to, if we succeed, give you some methods for improving the economy for, for you and your better half. This is something that we shall see how you can achieve this also in this presentation. So I think it's, if we succeed, it should be um, pretty good in the end. Okay, security. Um, typically when you hear pen penetration testing, this is about uh, the server side, um, taking care of if you have a web service, uh, the security, um, identifying vulnerabilities at the server side. But uh, unfortunately, maybe, um, there is also a client side to this uh, web service scenario. So let's, let's just have in mind, okay, we have a, a web service handling sensitive information. Well, quite often the, the security level at the server side is, is pretty well taken care of. We have some kind of encrypted communication, which often is quite good. But then we have this, this client side. It's about unmanaged uh, PCs, it's about stuff that often is, is not really uh, under control, so we often we don't really know what's going on out there. And I think um, this is a little bit the, um, the things that has not been focused so much upon when it comes to security of web services. It's like, well, we can't do anything about it anyway if, uh, it's, if it's online banking and it's private end users accessing the, the bank web service, well, you can't do anything about the client side, so let's forget it. But in this, in this uh, presentation, let's take a look on this client side, on the methods uh, which can be used to, uh, to do evil, evil stuff. <coughs> And since, since this is the client side um, and threats on the client side, I have to say that I would say that maybe 99% of, of the threats on the client side is, is really about Windows. So we, we better focus on, on Windows in this, um, when, when it comes to this aspect. So here I have a prepared a VMware image. Um, and I have to say, it's a, it's a nicely infected uh, system, as you might see here. Here we have a nice keylogger. And actually, it's, it's a PC of my wife. And uh, I installed this keylogger to keep a little bit track on what she's doing. And this is something that I can highly recommend. Um, so here we have the actual spy, quite widely used um, keylogger. So let's just let's just dig straight into this. Um, okay, so we we now have this infected system. So let's forget about how it became infected. Uh, well, it was probably maybe some email attachment, whatever. Uh, there are many ways in, but let's forget about that. Uh, so the infection vector for the malware to gain access to the PC, let's forget it. Let's just assume that it's there. And in this case, it's quite a lot. Um, 
So let's let's start. Let's see how it goes. <coughs> so now I shoot up Internet Explorer as as you can see here. My wife is really a fan of toolbars. So when it comes to sensitive web services, actually we just saw the first bad thing when it comes to security. Actually we can see that the browser in, in, in some sense has already been compromised. There's already some unknown stuff uh, in there, these toolbars. Um, and it might be very nice to have in many, in many circumstances if you do random surfing, uh, great to have, great help. But when it comes to, to, to sensitive web services, well, it's not a good thing. But nevertheless, it's there. So let's just see. First, I activate uh, the keylogger. I go back to the browser and just type a little. Hello world. Stop monitoring. And you can see here the keystrokes were easily captured. captured. Can you also see this in the back? Okay. Should I try zooming a little bit? Or is it is it okay? Okay. Okay, good. So Behind the scene, what actually happened here? Well, obviously, the, the keylogger got the keystrokes. So how did he do that? Well, um, on Windows, like, I would say about 90% of the keyloggers, um, he registered himself as some nice GUI event uh, extension module. He used uh, a standard API, um, set Windows hook. Uh, some of you might be familiar with that. So this is a standard Windows API, so there's nothing about exploiting a buffer flow vulnerability inside the browser to gain access. Well, not at all. This is just a standard Windows API. The keylogger registers himself as, as uh, such a thing, and the operating system happily grabs the keylogger module, puts it into the, um, the browser, and hooks him up to the keyboard interface from the inside. So, okay, this was listening to the keyboard interface, but it was happening from inside the browser. So right now, the keylogger module would be inside the browser, hooked up to the keyboard interface in a very, very standard way. Thank God you might think that this would never, this kind of method could never be used on, on, on my PC because I have, I have my, my installed uh, antivirus. Um, he may or may not see, uh, recognize the keylogger as malware, but one thing is pretty, pretty certain, and that is, if you don't, the keylogger would have free play. There are all kinds of also legal programs uh, doing this, um, so your typical antivirus would not react to this at all. Maybe when you think about client-side uh, security, you might think, oh no, this would be, this presentation would be about the millions and millions of Trojans, uh, variants uh, out there. Um, so now when I shoot up the, the Proman uh, test suite, you might expect a lot of buttons. One for this, uh, thousand buttons for this Trojan, how he can gain access to, to the browser. But as we shall see shortly, our test tool doesn't have a lot of buttons. And how come? Well, if you look at it from, from the antivirus perspective, the appearance of the malware, then it's true, then it's about millions and millions, uh, small variations uh, in the looks and the appearance. But when it comes to the method, if you look at uh, a very active bank troll like SUS, you would see that there are millions of variations out there rapidly changing themselves. But when it comes to the method, actions uh, taking place on the client side, well, there's actually only one. So all these variants, well, they all do the same. Use the same two, three methods 
like everybody else. So when we forget about the appearance and, and focus on the action, well, all these variations really boils down to, to uh, some key, key things. But before we leave the keylogger aspect, let's just use the tool now. First, I select the application to attack. I enable the keylogger. And again, <coughs> hello again, the keylogger easily grabbed. So for keylogging, uh, there are really two aspects to consider there. One was this interface inside the browser. The other one, in this case, our test tool is listening to this interface from the outside. When it comes to, to sensitive web services, there are really two, two important aspects of, of, of the browser security, so to say. One, as we saw, are the, the interfaces. Um, another important thing is, of course, what kind of thing you allow to go into the browser. And now let's do a, a man in the browser attack. So let's first look on some injection vectors uh, which can be used to gain ac access to the browser. And then let's look at the consequences afterwards. So first, I perform a code injection. And as you can see, boom, I have a nice devil pulsating inside the browser. What I did here was again set Windows look. The operating system injected my devil DLL. And he, of course, he would, in a real case scenario, he would start operating in the background, making a pretty uh, boring uh, live demo out of it. So we added uh, this pulsating devil. Also on Windows, you have um, a very convenient uh, way of also gaining access to another program by means of manipulating the execution flow, in this case, inside the browser. So I do a code execution attack. And again, the result is the same. So what happened now? Well, the attack tool um, now created a, a thread of execution inside the browser. And again, it was a standard API, create remote thread, for those of, of you who know, who know that. What happens then is the, the attacking tool simply tells the operating system, can you be so nice to create uh, a new thread of execution inside this process? And the operating system happily uh, does that. Um, you get your own stack, uh, it starts executing, executing after a while, and boom, uh, you have your devil inside. So these first uh, two illustrations were uh, about gaining access to the browser. So let's, let's see a little bit what can we do uh, when we have the access um, to the browser. What are the consequences? So here we have, again, uh, a man in browser attack tool. Um, my wife, as you can see, would try to log into uh, her Google uh, Gmail. So when configuring uh, this tool, first I have to gain access to the browser, which we already saw, and then I need to do some conf configuration in order to be able to steal things. So if I now quickly take a look at the, at the source of this page, I can scroll down a little bit, and somewhere down here I would find uh, the name and the ID of the two elements that I'm interested in. And uh, it would be about here. Mm. Here it's email. I cheated a little bit, prepared myself in advance, and here it's password. So now I got the ID of these two elements. 